everyone. Good morning and welcome to Build. I'm your host, Brittany Jones Cooper. The new pop TV show, Florida Girls, follows four friends who enjoy drug-fueled trips to water parks, but are forced to confront their mundane lives in Clearwater, Florida, after their only ambitious friend moves away. Florida Girls creator, Laura Chin, stars alongside Lacey Mosley and Patty Guggenheim, and they're all here today. But first, here's a clip. No one's ever moved away before. What if we went back to school and got out of Florida like Mandy did? I think about it, all we do is like get hammered and do dumb crap. <laughs> you can't blame alcohol for being a bad rollerblader. We're staying in Florida forever. You can't even afford to finish your tattoo. Sorry, I'm not a billionaire. He's 79. Is this seriously all we have? I was actually thinking about getting my GED. I'm smart, right? But bam! You look like a really expensive prostitute. No, don't compliment her. Why do you keep hanging out with these crazy ass white girls? Actually, my mom's black. What? Wow, I haven't seen you since prom? Oh yeah, that was bullshit. They arrested me just because I didn't go to school there no more. And you were smoking weed. And you had a knife. And I stole a computer. Do you guys hear these lyrics? Are they bad for women? Hey girl, let's dump that chest. Party all night. You shut your damn mouth. The What? If you won't get on food stamps, then you can't live here anymore. I'll help you pack your stuff. There. All done. Queen came down from her castle, did she? Get off my lawn. Ugh, moms. Put your hands together for Laura Chen, Lacey Mosley, and Patty Guggenheim. <laughs> How are you guys doing today? Good. Okay, good. Happy to be here. I saw on your Instagram you guys in Times Square with the Florida girls yes. in the back. What does it feel like to just see that and that people are going to get to see the show? I was born Something in New York. <laughs> Why was I about to say I was born in New York City? Ooh, I was about to start lying immediately. Y'all said the show started, I immediately started to lie. I'm from Texas. But I started acting in New York City, so it was a huge deal to go in Times Square and see our faces up there. It's surreal. It truly was like, I mean, we like were told about it like a month ago, so we were all very prepared. And when we came out here, we were walking there, and I was like very prepared. And then I saw it, and I was like, oh, oh my god. <laughs> I was not prepared at all. Yeah, the exciting. last time I was in Times Square, too, I think it was I was at TRL, and I was trying to get, you know, Carson Daly to, like, look at me as a seventh grader. And I was like, hi. And then it was just there, and it was it was really weird. Yeah. That would be, because sometimes if I really love a show and I see the billboard in Times Square, I'm, like, all excited, and I didn't create it. Or right, write. right, yeah, right. So, and you did. You created this show, and you're yes. one of the writers on the show. So take me through just the idea where it came from. Yeah, I, I grew up in Florida, in Clearwater, Florida, which the town is um, that we're in, on the show. And... Uh, when I first moved to LA, it, I would like casually tell a story about growing up in Florida that I thought was pretty mundane. And people in LA were like, what? Like, we just got into crazy shit that I didn't think was crazy until I like, got out of it. And I was like, whoa. Um, so it's been many, many years of telling so many stories and so many people telling me to make a show about it. Um, and so we finally were able to. So it was a major dream come true. And what was the journey like though? Because that sounds, I'm sure that sounds easier said than done. Oh yeah, yeah, no, it was a journey. Um, it was, I wrote on a lot of shows, um, and I, like, when I first moved to L.A., I, like, wrote a feature about Florida girls, um, and, uh, no one wanted to buy it, um, but then I started writing on other shows and, um, learning how to write and going that path. I did UCB, which Lacey also does. I took classes at Groundlings, which Patty does, um, so I did, like, all the steps and all the things and bided my time and then finally, like, wrote a pilot that, you know, someone was wanting to make. Jack's Media, like, funded a pilot presentation presentation that these girls were in and it's just been like a very like scrappy project from the beginning and all of us like putting our faith into it and yeah worked let's out let's talk about casting how did you guys hear about florida girls because you guys were a part of the, the original pilot right well this yeah. is crazy um i moved to la three years ago and laura chen was my first improv coach <laughs> 
<laughs> so she used to yell at me about <laughs> crazy things that I would do doing improv, which is like an insane thing that we do that's all make-believe. You know, it's like, oh, you didn't make that box big enough. There's no real box. Um, it's very silly, but we're very passionate about it. And that's how I met her. So what was crazy was, is like, I didn't have any representation at the time. Like, I was still a struggling actress. When I got the first contract uh, for Florida Girls, they were like, okay, so who, who are your lawyers? Like, who are we sending this to? I was like, uh, y'all can send that to Mosley and Mosley <laughs> at gmail.com. <laughs> I'm going to have my people look it over. <laughs> my people is me and my mama. Shout out to moms. <laughs> and how about um, you? Yeah, I got an email. I actually looked at, looked at it this morning because I was like, what was this? I got an email for a self-tape, and I was like, you know, this is a project. We have the same manager, so that's how I found out about it. But then I sent it sent in a self tape and I was like is it okay if I send it in today it's too is it too late and Laura told me mine was the first one in so yeah. I was like very anxious no I, I was really excited about it the first thing I read was just like it was so different and these characters were seemed so like unique fleshed out and special I got to see the first two episodes, and I was telling you guys in the back, I wanted to watch more, so I, this is definitely like a binge-worthy show. Yay. And I, I, what I love is just this female dynamic, which feels so familiar, regardless of where you're from, just like that trust and love that a friendship of women have. But then also just how outrageous they are, and like the dialogue is so hilarious. Like the shit that they say to each other <laughs> is so fantastic. So take me through the character development. Let's start with you play Shelby. Yeah. Um, so who is she in the group? Um, she's basically just me. Um, she's like, she's a mom. She's like more, she's probably the most grounded person in the group and the most like hopeful towards the future. Um, and it's interesting, like none of the girls are like stupid, but they don't have any information, you know? So we didn't want to make them like so dumb, but they just don't have any information. And Shelby like really wants to be smart and wants to do better, but no one in her life has ever told her any like valuable information. Um, so she's like really trying and wants to go back to school and get her GED and everyone's a high school dropout. Um, and uh, she's, yeah, she's kind of annoying, but like you love her. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you mentioned like their high school dropouts, which uh, Melanie is not here. Yeah. Uh, she plays Caitlin and she's the character who's most proud of that. Yeah. She's just sort of like, this is who we are. And we, so I love that dynamic. Uh, and then you play Jayla. Yes, so I tell us about Jayla. her. Um, I would say if there was a word to symbolize Jayla, it's probably greed. Um, <laughs> Jayla has champagne taste on a mod liquor budget, <laughs> on a four loco budget. Um, <laughs> but listen, she know she may not have had money, but she knows what money looks like. She will clock your shoes, your watch. You can tell her what you do for a living, and she'll add up how much salary you got after taxes. Um, and that's. That's how Jayla's trying to get out. Like, Shelby's trying to better herself through an education and nagging us to do better, whereas Jayla's like, I'm going to find a man. And that's a job, honey. There are women and men out here who are full-time employed spouses, okay? Uh, don't let people fool you. There's, there's, there's cooking, there's education, there's cleaning. Jayla's doing it all, you know what I mean? She's reading the books so that she can hopefully snag her an Applebee's franchise deer. <laughs> and I, I grew up with a girl. I grew up with a girl who, like, we were so, so, so poor, but she was always talking about wanting a Range Rover. And I'm like, let's get a Honda first. Like, no. one step at a time. No. Yeah. I love it. Just, like, absorbent wealth yeah. immediately. You're like a Chevy Cavalier sounds more 100%. Accessible. A car like. with a working engine is a great goal. Mm. Right. German engineering, at least. <laughs> no. But she's, she's good to her friends. She's a little flaky at times and very selfish, but she's a good friend and she's a good person. Yeah. And then you play Erica. Yeah, Erica is... Um, shady <laughs> as fuck she's just like everything is up for grabs for her she's very kind of like arrested development uh like they all are in some ways but she's kind of just like there and like huh what what are we doing like she's just kind of like she goes along for the ride but then she'll end up finding like the shady scavenger way to like get out of something so and also, you really had to embrace your nudity, it seems like. I did, and now, yeah. I, yeah, <laughs> yeah Laura? Laura. Laura? Laura? I Laura? love the female form. Um, <laughs> no, I, I, uh, she's not actually nude. No one ever no. got nude. Men got nude. There's like, there's like yeah. gonna be like some kind of red bandy version of the show with like raw penis, but um, the yeah, women were always wearing, you know, we just blurred Laura it. Laura demanded it. the um, dicks out. But, 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 uh, 
in my defense, it was based on your story that you told me. Right. Don't tell Laura stories because she writes them in a, yeah. to the script and then you have to do them. Um, <laughs> That's on you. Yeah. So it was my fault. Yeah. I take yeah. full yeah ownership. So the nudity was intense and we were <laughs> like <laughs> at water parks and, you know, all of these like very public places. But it was very fun. I mean, it was a really comfortable environment and set. So speaking of stories. Where do some of these stories come from? Because these women get into just a lot of situations that I didn't even think were possible, <laughs> including like weird acid trips and just like fun stories like that. So how much of that is sort of things that you've seen and then just created from your brain? So much are things that I saw. Yeah, a lot of it is taken from just like stories that have happened. And we, it was a, it was a long, I spent a long like 12 years in Florida and a very like unsupervised, no parental guidance 12 years where we were just like bumping into things and getting into all kinds of trouble. Um, so a lot of it, like I, every single episode has like a nugget of a true story. Yeah, and then we just would take it and extrapolate and heighten it and all that stuff. Do you guys have a favorite story or scene that you guys got to play that I can look forward to watching? Ooh, good Ooh. question. What was, oh God, so much of it was so fun. I mean, we were on that jet ski for a hot minute. Oh, that was the last thing I was going to say was the water work. <laughs> yeah. I was having the time of my life because I got to drive it. And they were like, stop. <laughs> they were having, they were struggling, but I was having the best. Time. I could see the pure joy on your face. Actually, yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was like a four-person jet ski. You don't get to drive this often. The seventh like, episode that we did has a moment in it that's like very close to my childhood, and the girls are like sneaking around and trying to catch a guy in the act, you know, like a boyfriend or whatever. And um, they like look in a window and they see more than they were bargaining for. Um, and that's like very close to my childhood. That story is like kind of verbatim what happened to me. So that episode, I'm particularly. <laughs> really excited about um i'm excited about a, a nugget in I, actually i love the episode bookstore so so much because that's when jayla decides to get a job ish yeah. um <laughs> and the way she gets a job there was like a montage series that i like fought for so hard because it was a long day and we were like we're gonna have to cut it remember the crazy long yes. day um <laughs> i don't want to say how long <laughs> <laughs> but um, it, was, it was 72 hours. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't sleep for three days. <laughs> she wanted us to be like meth method. <laughs> That's what we call it. Um, yeah. Meth method. Yeah. Uh, no, so, and I was like, please, please. Like, I was showing her, like, me, like, swinging around on this pole and stuff. I was like, please, please, can we do this? It's amazing. <laughs> and it was very fun. And I'm so glad that we did it. Yes. And obviously, the writing is very strong, but you all have improv backgrounds. So how much does that play into scenes? How much do you guys stick to the script? And then when do you break away and sort of improv? I feel like we stuck to the script a ton. I feel like in the makeup trailer in the morning, we would read stuff and then we'd be like, can I say this differently? Can I say that differently? This does, this feels weird in my mouth, like that kind of stuff. But because we moved so quickly and because there's a ton of story packed into those like, you know, 25 pages, um, we stuck to the script more or less always yeah and there were some fun moments that we were allowed to play around with I think a lot of the physicality we were allowed to play around with there was a moment where Patty scales a fence um, that no one was expecting her to scale uh, <laughs> so sweetly <laughs> yeah except I had to get a tetanus shot <laughs> yeah she fell and had to get a tetanus shot we were all it was a scary time yeah but they I will say Worth like it. they the they every single person brought so much to their character that like improv is kind of built into it because they like I feel like the writing was 50% and then the actors were 50% in terms of like what they brought and what they added in their voice and all of that. So it's, it's weirdly like a combination of both. And you mentioned how personal this story is for you. And one of them is you being biracial and going through the world and navigating your identity, which I love this storyline because my family is like the United Colors of Benetton. <laughs> Black comes in all different shades. Yeah. And I think it's so important to show the experience. And so why was that important for you to, to write in for that to be a part of your character's experience? I think because like it, I don't see it talked about that often. Um, and, um, and it, and it, I think like growing up in Florida, it was like, I, I was like a spy for black people, you know? Like I got to see white people behaving like they do in the South when they don't think any black people are around. And, and I was really eye opening. And I think like part of this show, what was important to me is kind of like to show white people their version of racism that they think isn't racism. And it's like, honey, it's racism. Um, and so there's just little moments like throughout the series where you kind of see Florida through Jayla's eyes and it's different than people that don't look black, you know, like it's a different experience. 
experience and it's like heartbreaking but true and I feel like it's always like racism's over and I'm like oh no 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 <laughs> especially not in Florida especially not yeah especially <laughs> not in the certain states yeah. on that note too Kim Whitley plays your mom yeah. <laughs> which is like the most genius casting did you how hard was that to get her what was that process like because she to me is like a comedic genius she's incredible <laughs> incredible and um thankfully I had written on a show that she was on I had acted on another show that she was on so she her and I were friends and I reached out to someone that like ran a show she was on that trusted me and so she trusted me enough to come in and uh we like had a chemistry read and it was amazing and she looks like everyone in my family like they're all the same shade and like everything I was so excited um and weirdly like we look like mother and daughter in a way that's so wonderful um, but she posted the video on her Instagram and everyone's like, why are you playing a mom to this white girl? And I was like, exactly. You're like, that's exactly, exactly the point. Exactly the point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but she's amazing. And she's come in like such a veteran and like, I feel like taught me so much about just set etiquette. And she's such a oh professional. God, she's a breath of fresh air. And like, we were there obviously the longest and like, you're, you're hot and you're working very hard. And like, she would come on set and make everyone laugh. And like, just from top to bottom, everyone adored her. So it was so nice being with her. Also, it was so nice having having Laura as a woman of color on this set because this comedy is like crazy and raunchy and like as a black woman I feel so protective over black images in the media and I'm so conscious of the fact that this character is so big and we wanted her to be big but we didn't want her to be broad like not only is she not a representation of every single black woman she is a person and I feel like black people hopefully the gradient is moving more towards we don't have to show every single person on television being a shining example of blackhood for in order for in order for us to be worthy to be alive which is where it comes from is like if we purport ourselves a certain way maybe the police won't kill us you know what I mean <laughs> so especially <laughs> in Florida <laughs> Mm -hmm. yeah. So it was so great to have like Laura be so astute over this character and make her so smart and make her, you know, like she's flawed and she doesn't know things, but that doesn't mean that she is a caricature of a human being. She's by far the smartest person on the show. <laughs> but also sure. just like, I think with comedy, like everyone has to be flawed, like has to be flawed. And Kim was saying that too, because her character is like super shady, like a con artist. She'll con me out of like a dollar. I'm like, mom, like she's like super shady. And she was like, I'm so excited to play someone shady. She's like, I don't I don't have to be wise. I don't have to be all knowing. I can just be like super shady and that's okay. So it was definitely like a fun thing to be able to just create like flawed women, flawed diverse women and like be okay with it. But that is I think the true test of like progress and representation is that we don't have to have these perfect characters and they can be human and nuanced and you know that's sort of the point. So yes. 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 Yeah. It's and I think see. like the themes this show touches on is such like for all of us it was such a learning experience because you know, like you don't get to see everyone's kind of perspective in represented in entertainment. And so it was, it's a really cool, like zany and weird, but also like grounded in like such real stuff going on. I, that's what I said drew me to. It's like that friendship is first and anybody who has a close group of girlfriends, you can get it. You can go through anything together yeah. as long as you have that like foundation there. There's like a ton of love without ever saying I love you. <laughs> <laughs> we never Do we ever say we love each other? I don't think so. Wow. I don't know if these yeah. girls are capable. The whole conversation <laughs> about dads had me floored. <laughs> I was like, that is such a dark conversation and I was laughing so hard at it. My friends and I have had that conversation because for, for so many different reasons, none of us had dads growing up. Like there's, we have like a dead dad and an out of state dad and an absent dad and like all these different and I looked back on it and I was like oh that's what we had in common is that like we had to be each other's family because our families were so scattered um so that was very based on real life so true. Yeah. and did you guys film this in Florida or where was this no we filmed in Savannah oh, okay Neighboring. Yeah, it, it looks a lot like Florida. We got very lucky because Georgia had an incredible tax credit, and um, it looks very similar to Florida. Yeah. Did you guys make a trip down to Clearwater at all, though, just to sort of get the vibe? Well, it, we didn't get to go, but I did. Yeah, I did. I, I, I go there every year to Florida, a different place to go camping, and, like, Florida's so beautiful. Um, I have, like, a love affair with Florida now. I feel like I'm, like, obsessed with it. Um, but I go every back every year, but this, this past year I went back specifically for, like, research to talk to locals and just, like, get immersed in it. Um, but I really want you guys yeah, to go. I, I, I have to so go bad. now. And we shot a bunch of B-roll there. We went back and shot a bunch of, like, signage and houses and neighborhoods and stuff, and that was very exciting. Yeah, please go and then cover it on your social. Yeah. Your social's, like, 
top top game. <laughs> Thank you. I will put it on my Instagram yes. story. Yes. Lady yes. Take Diva notes. We're like, what are you doing? Okay, I need to do that. Okay. <laughs> For scams and cons and also acting. It's so good. <laughs> It's just so thorough. It's like a nice little journey here into the story. So I appreciate it. In preparing for this interview, I was like, let me see what they're up to. And I was like, oh, I can see everything. I, Great. Yes, I, when I was like writing this, I would go on her Instagram for inspiration. Like the characters like are for her. Like she, yeah. So yeah, her Instagram's incredible. Uh, well, I know we have a couple of questions from the audience before we get out of here. So we have two. Who's the first one? Hi. Um, Hi. I was wondering uh, for Laura, uh, did you bring any stories that were from Florida to your writers that was maybe something that they thought was too far? <laughs> <laughs> yes. You know what's crazy is like, it, I mean, okay, the one thing I will say, I will say like our network is incredible. They let us do everything we wanted to do. Um, and that was like, we felt very lucky and nothing was too far for them and that was huge. Um, the one thing I will say is like, the stories from Florida that I didn't touch on are the ones that are too sad. <laughs> like the ones where I was like, I'm not gonna go there. Um, so like, none of us are ever gonna have a baby. You know, like we need <laughs> to be like, I don't want anybody in peril. I don't want any innocence in peril. Um, so yeah, so those stories we kind of stayed away from. Um, and Three Arts, who's a produ producer on this show, they were like, promise me none of these girls will ever have a baby. I was like, okay, okay, we'll <laughs> see. Um, but uh, but yeah, those kinds of things. In the finale. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I really kind of. <laughs> secretly want Caitlyn to have a baby because I think she will be so angry at it. Oh, would, yeah. She would <laughs> hate that baby so much. Yeah. And that baby would hate her back. <laughs> that baby would fight her that back. That baby would punch her back. It would actually be really beautiful, this like very aggressive mother-daughter Which I, Which I want to do when yeah. we meet her mother. If we get a second season, I really want to meet her mother and I want them to be super similar. <laughs> Next question. Hi, um, I was wondering if either of you kept costumes or props from set. Now's the time to admit it, ladies. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. Um, Our costume designer <laughs> tried, offered us if we wanted to keep anything. I wanted one swimsuit, and they yeah. wouldn't let me have it. I know, it. they had to keep everything, I guess. I kept a pair of shorts. I'm going to tell everyone right now. Whoa. I kept a pair of shorts. I was like, I couldn't find those shorts, and now they're at I will say I had a lot of stuff from this company, Jams World. I'm trying to get sponsored, okay? <laughs> Jams World. But Look into the camera. Jams World, are you out there? I need all of your stuff. Um, it's like a 90s brand. I'm not really sure, but they make like silk shirts and stuff. But I did find this you dress. Yes. This Florida dress. Yeah. Jams World. Jams World. I found it at a Where's thrift Clearwater? store. Where's Clear there Clearwater? Clearwater. <laughs> um, I found it at a thrift store in Savannah, like right before our, our rap party. So and that a lot was of just her a wardrobe weird was coincidence. also weirdly Jams World. Yeah. But I, yeah. I want more Jams World, so. Well, Jams World, are you listening? <laughs> I would also like to be sponsored. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Jams World is like, I've been out of business for 40 <laughs> years. Yeah. Uh, well, ladies, this was so much fun for me to talk to you because, like I said, I'm a huge fan of this show. You have a new fan here. I think it's so funny. I can't wait for my friends to see it and to talk about it because, like I said, it has that female friendship, but it's so absurd, and it's sort of like a life I wish I could live Yay! if I didn't want to pay bills, you know? Yeah, so, that's exactly yeah. the yeah. point. That's so it's the, fun to watch. Yeah, that's the point. Yeah. So thank you for joining us. If you guys want to check out Florida Girls, it premieres tonight, right? Yeah, yeah 10 p.m. on Pop TV. Put your hands together for Laura Chin, Lacey Mosley, and Patty Guggenheim. Yay.